All right, in the last video, we left ourselves with a big old mess. Uh, we had determined uh, some of the variables that were important for understanding how taking an online course might cause you to stay in college longer or drop out. Uh, and we so had our list of variables. We had a bunch of ideas about which of those variables caused which others, and we got ourselves this causal diagram. And it is a big old mess. Uh, now, uh, we're going to want to simplify this diagram. And let me tell you why we might be interested in simplifying this diagram. Because you might think, well, okay, yeah, great, it's complex, but the world is complex. So maybe our diagram should also be complex. And that is true, right? We want to represent the real world in our diagram. That is definitely the case. Um, and we're going to want to be careful as we go through simplification, not to simplify too far in the other direction so that we end up with something that doesn't really represent the real world. But simplification is still going to be a valuable thing to do. Uh, for a couple reasons. For one, uh, if we are really willing to put everything down on the diagram, uh, we're not going to be able to do much with the diagram. Uh, and that might sound like a cop-out, like, okay, well, doesn't that mean you shouldn't even bother with any of this whatsoever? Um, but sometimes it's because we're just being a little bit hard on ourselves by allowing the, all the myriad forms of complexity that could possibly exist in the world. So the simplifications that we're going to be looking for are going to be kinds of simplifications that are going to let us focus in on how to understand our setting uh, and how to maybe design a research study that will help identify our effect of interest um, without really getting rid of the complexity, just sort of making things a bit clearer for ourselves. It will also help us figure out a bit more clearly what are the important parts of this diet. Uh, so, for example, as we go through some, some, some forms of simplification, some of the forms of simplification are going to be in the sense of, okay, yeah, great, we have all these different variables that might be causing us problems, let's sort of put them in one bucket, call that the problem bucket, right? Uh, that doesn't really make things any simpler in terms of, uh, you know, cheating, in terms of assuming that the world is simple enough that we can understand it easily, but it will help us understand what the real problem is, right? We have this sort of bucket of problems, maybe we have some other way we can deal with it. Um, so we're going to want to simplify. Uh, we're going to want to stay away from the, 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 the trap of putting everything on our diagram. How can we actually do it? So there's four ways that I think of simplifying a causal diagram that I think work pretty well. The first is unimportance. Now this one we already sort of covered. Now there are an infinite number of things that could go on a diagram that might be related in some sort of obscure way to our treatment or outcome variables, but we're not gonna wanna include them if they are just sort of trivial, mostly unimportant things that might be relevant maybe once in a while, a little tiny bit, right? If something is unimportant to our diagram, even if it technically does cause something on our diagram, we can probably get rid of it without worrying too much. Remember, we are dealing in the world of statistics here. Uh, the assumptions that we're going to be making don't necessarily need to be ac ex exactly 100% true all the time. In fact, almost certainly every assumption that we make is going to be at least a little bit false. Statistics is about modeling the world. It's not about perfectly representing the world exactly. There's going to be a little bit of deviation between the model that we are using and the actual real world, which is too complex to do anything about. Uh, sometimes a little bit less is a little bit more if we can get rid of some unimportant distractions to allow ourselves to focus on the important stuff. So getting rid of variables that are only minorly important is going to help us clear things up. And we already talked about doing that a little bit in the last video. So let's move on to some of the other ways that we can simplify a causal diagram. The second way we can simplify a causal diagram is to think about redundancy. So remember, the reason why we're making this causal diagram is not necessarily so we can claim, hey, here is the most full, complete picture of the world. What we're really trying to do is trying to identify our effect of interest, figure out how to do that. We're really interested in trying to answer a research question. So from the point of view of the world, yes, there's a lot of different stuff going on here. Uh, but from the point of view of our research question, some things are just going to be sort of redundant. I mentioned the problem bucket. This is sort of what I'm talking about. So if you have a set of variables for which the arrows in and out of them all tend to be going to the same places, then from the point of view of your research question, those sort of all fulfill the same role. So for example, let's take all the variables on our diagram that cause taking an online course and cause whether you drop out or not and don't really have anything else to do with anything else. And we can sort of put them in one little bucket and say, these are just some sort of background characteristics. Right? Maybe we have our demographic characteristics and uh, things like socioeconomic status and gender and race and et cetera. And maybe in, from the point of view of our research question, those all sort of tend to occupy the same space on the diagram. So what we can do is we can take all three of those things and go pop them together and say, this is our demographics variable. 
Uh, now we have simplified from three variables on our diagram to just one. Uh, and it's going to make our presentation a lot easier. It's going to be a lot easier to think through what it is that we need to do to identify our effect. Now, of course, later on when we actually go to use the diagram, we'll need to remember that demographics is really all those three things packaged together. Uh, but for now, when we are just thinking through identification, yeah, it's okay to put them all together. So we can take some redundant elements of the diagram and pop them together so that we can worry about them a little bit later and for now make things a bit clearer. The third way that we can simplify our diagram is to take out some mediator. So mediator is basically an explanation of why one variable causes another. Right, so for example, let's say we're interested in the effect of the price of cigarettes on the rate of lung cancer. Now we might expect that, yeah, if the price of cigarettes goes up, we might expect that to cause the rate of lung cancer to go down because more expensive cigarettes might mean that fewer people smoke cigarettes. So we have an arrow from the price of cigarettes to number of cigarettes smoked to cancer rates, right? So in that case, the uh, actual number of cigarettes smoked, that is a mediator. It is the reason why the price of cigarettes affects lung cancer rates. Now, uh, in some cases, depending on what your research study is, that might be the thing that you are interested in, right? And in that case, we definitely wanna keep that in the diagram. Uh, so for example, if I wanna know what the effect of smoking on lung cancer rates, and I just happen to be paying attention to the fact that smoking is also caused by uh, uh, the price of cigarettes, well then yeah, I would wanna keep that in there. I don't wanna get rid of the mediator, the cigarette smoking, just because it is a mediator. But sometimes we don't necessarily care about what the me what the, the mechanism is, right? So in the case of online schooling and the effect of online schooling on whether you stay in school, why might online schooling cause you to stay in school or drop out? Well, maybe it uh, affects how affiliated you feel with the school. If you never go to campus, maybe you just don't really think of yourself as, you know, one of the fighting lions, right? And so you, you don't bother coming back. Uh, or maybe it, it's a difference in the education quality, right? And these are interesting questions, but we might say, well, you know, I'm, I'm curious about those things, but I don't really have the ability to study those. I'm not going to study those. And the only thing that they do on my diagram is sit between my treatment and my outcome or sit between one variable that I'm interested in and another. If you don't care about the mechanism or you're just humbly saying, maybe I do care, but I'm gonna leave that for another study, then you can pop them out. So if, if really we were interested in the effect of the price of cigarettes on lung cancer rates, and that's really what we wanted to know, we could just drop out the, the cigarette uh, smoking and say, yep, yeah, I'm just gonna look at what's the effect of the price of cigarettes on lung cancer rates directly. And in the back of my mind, I will know that they're, the reason why that might work is that people might smoke less. Uh, but in my actual study, I'm not gonna study that so I can drop it out. So in the case of our online education uh, example, we can leave out something like, how does the online education aspect, aspect affect your school spirit? And then how does your school spirit affect whether you stay in school or not? I'm gonna leave that out, I'm gonna simplify it, I'm just gonna have an arrow from online classes to uh, whether you stay in school. The final mechanism that we can use to help uh, simplify our causal diagram is irrelevance. So uh, st sticking with the last idea, there are a number of things that could go on our diagram that are just not gonna be that important for our actual study that we're gonna do. And while there's a bit more nuance to it than this, uh, and we'll get to it in more in later videos, but the basic idea is if you have a variable that's on your diagram and it's not really on any sort of pathway between your treatment and your outcome, you might be able to get rid of it. So let's say in the case of this diagram with online classes and dropout, uh, we have maybe uh, there's some there's a program in this college that uh, tends to sort of uh, accidentally get students to need one more term to graduate, like the way that the classes are structured, like you get to the end of your fourth year, maybe it's a four year program and you still need one more class to graduate. That could get a lot of people to drop out, but not really in a way that's related to taking an online course at all. Uh, and so that would be on our diagram. It is a determinant of dropout being in this program that happens to make you need to take extra terms in order to graduate. Um, but uh, it's not really related to our research question because it doesn't have anything to do with online courses. So the idea of irrelevancy might say that, yeah, we can leave that variable out of our diagram, uh, even though it belongs on it, it's part of the data generating process, but it doesn't have anything to do with our research question. And so if we're gonna simplify things, we can get rid of that variable. So those are four things that we can do to take a big messy diagram and simplify it a little bit. Uh, and in doing so, we will hopefully end up with a diagram that helps us focus in on using the diagram to answer our actual research question of interest, which is again, what we are trying to do and what we're gonna be doing uh, in our upcoming videos. Now, I will say all this process of simplification, we are simplifying things, right? We are taking the complex real world and we are ignoring parts of it. And I will say that's part of what 
doing this work is all about, trying to figure out what parts of the real world can we ignore, because anything you can ignore is going to be some great leverage for you, uh, because taking into account the entire real complexity of the world is impossible. You'll never learn anything if you're not willing to put your foot down and say, we are going to ignore this little wrinkle. Uh, you just can't do it. You cannot possibly understand the entire full complexity of the world and still learn something about it. And at least anything more specific than the world sure is complex, isn't it? Right? If, you, if you're not willing to ignore anything, that's the only conclusion you're ever going to come away with. Now that said, we are trying to simplify, but we don't want to simplify away too much. And there's some good ways that we can check that. Uh, so uh, we talked about a little bit about placebo tests as being one way of checking your causal diagram. And this is something that we're going to talk about more in future videos, but also it is a good way of seeing whether you've simplified too far. You can see whether the simplified version of the diagram that you have uh, tends to be implying some things that are not true or some things that are obviously false. Let's take a look at this simplified version of the online schooling diagram that we get after I apply some of those four methods that I talked about. Now, something you might not have noticed is that there are some assumptions baked into here that we've gotten from our simplification. Uh, and in particular, one that you might that I might point out is that I've assumed here that demographics and location are basically unrelated to each other. Uh, there's no pathway from location to demographics that doesn't go through what's called a collider, which we'll talk about in the next set of videos, um, which means that in this data, I should observe that the correlation between your demographics uh, and your location should be zero, which we know is probably not going to bear out in our data. Almost certainly different locations have different shares of different demographics, right? Some have different racial mixes or different age distributions or whatever, uh, which might suggest that maybe we've simplified this diagram a little too much, or at least we want to really carefully consider uh, whether we've left out something really important or whether this simplification is maybe justified and not that important. That's another question for thinking about how to edit that diagram even more. All right, that is it. Uh, in the next set of videos, we're going to be talking about looking at these diagrams and finding pathways between one variable and another, thinking about what exactly those pathways mean and what we can do with them. Thank you.